Okay, folks, we're just making uh, final adjustments, final photographs and that kind of thing, so apologies for the delay. <laughs> Ready? Uh, as I always say, we appreciate chefs giving up the time, coming here to share their expertise with us. So uh, can we give a big Manchester welcome, please, and northern welcome to Michael. Michael Wiglow from Hotel Hello. Football. My on? You will be. Hi. Uh, today... Um, obviously, I've just come from down south, but I'm primarily up here because I consult for hotel football and cafe football, which I'm sure you know is Ryan Giggs and Gary Neville and Stuart Proctor, who I used to work with. So um, it's quite a complicated dish. I'm doing a tuna dish today, but obviously talking about a few other things that we do with the cafe and everything and how important it is to use the best ingredients, and that's what we're doing at the cafe. I think everyone thought it was going to be sort of like a sports bar when it opened, but it's a lot more than that. It's about the quality produce and the, the whole experience. So without further ado, I'll just introduce my commie, which some of you probably know. Uh, come on, Ryan. He's not a very good cook, though, but he can play football. Still chatting. <laughs> Big round of applause for Giggsy, please. All right. All right. All right. So yeah, so you can you can help me cook today. Great. I hope your nice skills wait. have improved since last time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm better with my feet, you know that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I used to be. So what I'm first going to do is um, basically it's a yellow yellowfin tuna, which is, we do a tartare of it, and then we do a se seared piece of tuna as well, and it's dressed in a ponzu dressing, and we make our own dashi, so it's served with a a, a dashi. And we also make a jelly and wrap the tartare in that. So it's a really like oriental flavors in there, but it's basically all about the ingredients, all about the produce and everything like, like it is in the cafe and the hotel. It's just about primarily about the, the quality of produce and the, the end result. So basically we'll start with, we'll just heat this pan up if we can get this uh, garbage stove working. 
No. Do you do a lot of cooking at home? I don't. No. Neither do I. Us footballers, we have chefs and butlers and everything, know, you know. I know. Apparently. Yeah, I'm sure you don't. And I'm, like this, this dish is well, it's a really healthy dish, which obviously is pretty important to you as well with nutrition and everything. And we're, we're finding that more and more in the restaurant scene now that everyone wants to, you know, less fat, less oil, you know, less cream, less butter and everything. And yeah. just all about the nutrients, which you've probably had for years, haven't you? Yeah. So I'm making up for lost time and I'm actually <laughs> going the other way and just eating really? unhealthy now. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, but yeah, you're right. And uh, the... Um, the quality of food is obviously important for us when we were playing, but yeah, you like to go out and spoil yourself and have a nice glass of red wine as well. Yeah, I think that's what people are looking for, especially in, you know in, in my in my sort of position that you it's all it's all about the quality and sourcing the best ingredients and everything and knowing knowing who the growers are and you know obviously not going too far afield for your for your produce as well and things like that. It's all about it's all about that now and the, yeah. and the customers a bit more. Uh, in tune with that as well local produce as yeah well. well local i'm a, you know i think people batten on about local produce quite a lot but if if you know the farm down the road is producing something that's not great you know that's not a reason not to buy it there you okay. know I'll, we'll, we'll we'll get the best ingredients from as local as we can local being the british isles yeah yeah, yeah. so we're going to start off with um these are golden inoki mushrooms so we'll just start off with frying them off really, really, Where, really where's quickly. Where's tuna from, Michael? Uh, the, the tuna's from um, near sort of, it's quite a long way away, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's from uh, the, Indi the Indian Ocean. Okay. But we buy sustainable, you know, lion caught yellowfin tuna. We don't use bluefin tuna or anything, but we, we get a delivery of it every, every day. You know, it's got to be, because it's, it's more or less served raw, it's got to be at its optimum quality, really. Yeah, yeah. So we'll just start off with that. And while we're uh, while we're sauteing that, I've just a tiny a tiny bit of salt. And there again, you know, it's it's all down to the ingredients. The salt we use, it, it's called moon salt, and it's actually um, it's actually harvested only on a full moon in Spain. And they just take two millimeters off the layer of the salt beds on a full moon because that's when it's produced. So, so salt's not just salt, then. No, that you know, we d it, <laughs> even even for uh, seasoning water, we don't use table salt in the restaurant. We use like mold and salt for our basic okay. seasoning because it's it's just you know obviously your body needs five percent so salt today. It's only on a full moon. Uh, it's only harvested on a full moon. So yeah, it's it's quite expensive. It's about Puts fourteen. It's up. about fourteen pound for five hundred grams. Okay. Hence, that's why I've got to charge a lot of money. So. Put the other ones in as well. These are um, shimeji mushrooms. I mean, they all sound oriental, but they're actually all grown in England, just right. around the corner from where, where the restaurant is. So let's give them a quick saute. A little bit of sugar in there as well. And then what we're going to finish them off with is a little bit of rice wine vinegar. sesame oil it's important when you're using sesame oil not to uh, am I on uh, not not to not to scorch it because you just lose the flavor of it okay so uh, Michael was telling me that you're a bit of a wizard with a knife Ryan with a knife you've got amazing knife skills <laughs> no no <laughs> Probably about as good with a knife as I am with kicking a football. And that looks which, sharp as well, by the way. Which isn't very good. Each to their own. So we just quickly, quickly saute them off. Then we, then we leave them. So that's just salt, sugar, um, a little bit of mirin in there, a little bit of rice wine vinegar, uh, and sesame oil, golden inoki, shimeji blanc mushrooms, and shimeji brown mushrooms. So you're doing this at the moment in your restaurant. Uh, we do something similar on the, on the gourmet menu, yeah. It's been, okay. it's been on for a while, this, but obviously we, we keep, changing, keep changing the menu like, like we do in the cafe. You just keep evolving a dish. You, you put a dish on and think that's great, and then sort of two, three weeks later or two months later, you, keep, you start yeah, evolving yeah. it, and then the seasons change, so the dish evolves yeah. with it. And also, I get bored really easily as well, so sort of when it's been on for a few weeks, I'm, you know, I want to I do something different. So this is the dashi jelly. So basically we make a, a dashi with mineral water, 
uh, kombu and benito. So we take the mineral water. We can't use tap water because it's got too many um, things added to it, like chlorine and stuff like that. So it, it just in, impairs the taste. So we take mineral water up to 86 degrees with kombu in, which is big sheets um, seaweed. Then we take it off the heat, we leave it for two minutes. Then we put Benito flakes in for another two minutes. Then we pass it all off and all the seaweed goes in the bin. And then you're just left with a clear liquid. And then we uh, add soy sauce, mirin and white, rice wine vinegar into that. And that's our dashi that then we make the jelly out of. Right. And there's no gelatine in this as well. It's just um, like a vegetable protein that we use to set it. So then again, you know, it's like no meat in it, no things like that. So it's obviously a lot more healthy than this sounds healthy, this. What it, what it used to be. And then in there, we've just got our yellowfin tuna. So what we do, we cut the, um, cut the rounds of tuna and lightly seal them, which is that. And then afterwards, all the, all the sort of trimmings, we scrape with a spoon any, any white bits that are in there or anything, any sort of bits that you don't want. And then we just mix it into a tartar with um, coriander, um, soy, Mexican lime, Mexican organic limes uh, and a little bit of English wasabi in there as well and then just roll that. Do you want to have a go at one of these? No, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> so just as you're plating up there, chefs, just to explain these two lovely ladies on the left here, why they're here. Um, Dawn and Caroline are both involved with Hospitality Action, which is our industry charity. So everybody that's coming to eat and taste the food have donated money towards our charity. We've also been getting the chefs to sign the sh uh, two chefs jackets behind, which Ryan's very kindly signed as well. And they'll be going up for auction or, or something in not too distant future. So um, we may have a couple of questions off the ladies as we go along as well. Okay. Okay, Ryan, have a go. So put it on, so all you do, just roll it off. And then with a little palette knife, just flick it over. Time to get the smartphones going, folks. What do you do, just flick? You, you're allowed to use two hands. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty fragile, isn't it? Yeah. Not doing a good job here, am I? Would you want him on service, Chef? Uh, no. <laughs> Jesus, no pressure. What do you do now? You just, you roll, just roll it. it. Yeah, just roll it. Okay, we'll leave that one. It is, it is quite soft. Have, have a try of it. Have a try of it? Yeah. Because we've, we've already done the demo ones. And you can just taste how, how fresh that is. And it's important with, it, with, with anything you cook, like we cook at the cafe, everything needs to taste of what it should do. So, you know, if it's chicken, it's obviously got to take, nothing's got to overpower each other and everything's got to be put on the plate for a purpose, not just for a, you yeah. know, a bit of flowers here, there and everywhere. And you can't actually, it doesn't actually add anything to the, to the dish, which I think a lot of people make the mistake of doing, of over overcomplicating things. I mean, I'm known pretty much for, doing quite complicated dishes, but everything goes on the plate for a reason, and that's what you've, you know, I mean, that comes with sort of experience yeah. and, and trial and error. You know, I think you, you've got to be, I think most chefs, you, you sort of thrive on, on failure. You know, you'll make a dish, and if it doesn't work, you'll do your damn best just to make it work and try everything to, you know, to make those combinations work, right. and that's how you keep sort of evolving a dish. So I'm just gonna, this is, um, this is just tapioca. Obviously we can't make this now because it takes 24 hours to dry it. So what we do, we cook tapioca in um, just boiling water with no salt because it breaks tapioca down. We cook it for 25 minutes and then when it's still hot, we drain all the water off, we blend it into a, and it goes like a murky, almost like wallpaper paste. And then we put a couple of sheets of nori seaweed in there and then we spread it out onto a, a rubber mat, a silk pad, and then we dry it overnight and it goes like that which at the moment is inedible because it's so, it just tastes like plastic. And then we'll just cook it at a quite high temperature. And then it reforms itself and then pops up like that. So it just, add, just adds a little bit of salt right. to, the, to the dish. 
but with but without adding so you're just adding natural sort of seaweed flavor there we do this with a couple of things as well and also we've done it with desserts as well but it just adds another dimension to the dish and complements the whole thing should have a go with that you can look after that and i'll carry on there but just be careful it, it literally takes seconds and it's almost the same, it's the same sort of taste, really, if you would, as, as, a, as a quaver, but obviously not cheese flavor, seaweed flavor. Is it? Perfect. Thank you. It's a natural. natural. You've been practicing. <laughs> I think Dawn's got a question, folks. Firstly, Michael, uh, congratulations on your engagement. I believe you're getting married shortly. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's taken a few years, about, <laughs> probably about 30 and odd. <laughs> and also, what's it like to be back up in um, the north? Because I believe you're originally from yeah, Preston. Yeah, I'm from Preston originally. Yeah. But it, it's great because, I mean, I used to work in Manchester years and years ago. Yeah. And it's just changed so much and the food culture's changing everywhere. And it so it's, seems to be sort of Manchester's now the sort of happening place, really. You know, I mean, London's up in London and it always will be. But Manchester at the moment, there's so many good restaurants opening. The culture's changing. It's, it's It's such an exciting place and it's... God, it's changed so much since I worked here as and well. It's, it's still changing every day. Exactly, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what it's going to be like in five years is going to be amazing because yeah. you know there's everyone's opening new places and there's you know there's plenty of exciting opportunities in the pipeline as well. So sort of watch this space really. How do you balance everything? Because you've got two Michelin stars, five rosettes. You're with Cafe Football. How do you manage it all? Uh, a good train service and a fast car. <laughs> 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 and it's just I don't know. It's just. It, you know, you, you've got you've got good teams. We've got Brendan Files in the cafe football. He's the executive yeah. chef of yeah. both places. Who's amazing. You know, I've worked with for years. You know, we've got the support of Ryan and and Gary and Stuart Proctor that I've worked with for a long time as well. And it's just you've all got to, even though we're all from sort of different different areas of the business and different different businesses, we've all got the same drive, and that's yeah. important in any business. You know, yeah. to have people that have got the same drive regardless of where they're from. Absolutely. The team at Cafe Football and Hotel Football are amazing with their, uh, their history and uh, reputation. Ryan, how's it going there? Are you happy with how it's going? Yeah, we are. I mean, Cafe Football opened just before last Christmas, so we're over a year open. And like any business, we've chopped and changed and trying to find the right balance. Um, but that's been a really good year for us. And then Hotel Football what has been open a couple of weeks with Cafe Football in and together with Michael, Brendan and, yeah. and Stuart Proctor, like yeah. Michael's just mentioned, it's a great team. Yeah. You and get quite uh, involved, don't you? You uh, guys, Gary and... Yeah, well, it's we said it was about six or seven years in the making, really. Yeah. We started thinking about what we're going to do when we finish playing football. Obviously, I went on a bit longer than I, I thought I would, and, and so did Gary. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not just something that we thought we'll do you know, last year or something. It's been five or six years and it's vo evolved all the time. I have to say, I went to one of the soft openings and it was absolutely brilliant. I had the best veggie burger ever. The Red Devil cocktail went straight to my head, mm -hmm. um, but it was brilliant. And did you get your ball back? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't, no. Still in the canal somewhere, <laughs> so someone can go and dive in and get it. <laughs> I'm definitely, not gonna. Definitely, definitely. Thank you. Thanks. So the ne next part of this dish is um, Israeli couscous as well for the protein bit of it. So we've got um, Israeli couscous, we cook that in miso and then we just season it with a tiny bit of, uh, we make our own ponzu dressing. So we'll just put a bit, little, which gives it, which gives it a, just a touch of, um, touch of acidity as well, if you want to try that. Yep. Again, thinking sort of more healthy and things like that, yeah. and using, you know, you, a lot of the time using a lot less potato and things like that, and using more grains and pulses. And, it's all and light, things. isn't it? Really yeah, light. exactly. You know, it, it, it's like, you know, the menu is 10 courses in the, um, in the restaurant, but, you know, you go away from that and you don't feel bloated or anything. Yeah. You know, you can still eat something else, which is important. You know, it's not all about piling it full of potatoes and yeah, meats yeah. and stuff like that. It's about eating sensibly and integrating more vegetables and things like that on the menu as yeah. well. So we'll just put a little bit of that on there as well. And what we've done, we, um, we emulsify soy sauce. So we blend soy sauce really, really fast um, with a tiny little bit of egg as, as the protein part, and then just make a mayonnaise out of it. So it, it makes it like a, like a mayonnaise. And the same with uh, 
apple, we have, we have a, slow, um, a slow juicer, so we keep all the color, all the nutrients of everything of the apple, so it's not oxidizing, so you're not losing any of the apple flavoring nutrients. Just a little bit of that on the plate as well to cut through everything. at work and do you eat pretty healthy at work and it so then this this tuna has just been lightly seared so we just roll it in cling film just to shape it and then just sear it in a pan for literally like seconds trusty cling film. I don't know what chefs have sort of did with it without it about a hundred years ago. And just a tiny bit of ponzu dressing on that as well. And then we've got uh, wakami seaweed, which is actually Engl English wakami as well, that we'll just lightly dress. Again, you don't need to add any salt to this because it's Salty enough with a touch of. Um, Don't make a sudden movement. Is that me that's done that? It's just rubbing against the board. There you go. So, are you happy with the way things are going at the cafe and the hotel then? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Can you hear that? <laughs> okay. All right. So are you happy with everything, the way that things are going? Yeah. I mean, we, we've got the right people running the show. Um, Stuart Proctor, Stuart Davis, yourself, and Brendan. You know, we're, we're just ex-footballers who, like you say, have got the drive to everything we've gone into. We want to be successful. So that's what we share. But, you know, you're the experts. And, um, you know, we're very good at delegating. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people thought before you opened it that it was like just a normal, you know, run of the mill sports cafe and things like that, and that's why we all sort of got together and wanted to make it different. So it's actually people are wowed by the food and the atmosphere and everything else, and it's not all about boots on walls and things like that. It's it's about the the quality the quality of everything, isn't it, and the whole experience. Yeah, it is. It's the experience and the quality, whether it be in the cafe f football or in the hotel, and we want the service to be right. We want the food to be right. And yeah, we won't settle for anything less. So, um, been really pleased. Like I say, Cafe Football has been o open about 18 months now, just under, and that's going really well, going sh from strength to strength. And hopefully, the hotel, I'm sure it will, will follow that. And hopefully, more to come. More to come. That's the yeah. We want to walk before we can run, but we're in, we're ambitious. Exactly, we're yeah. all ambitious, and we we want to take um, not only all around Britain, um, but Europe and the world. So. With the quality that we've got, the team that we've got, I'm sure we can achieve that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we will. I'm quite excited about it. Because for, for, for me, it's for something completely different, you know, coming from sort of my background of Michelin stars and et cetera, et cetera. The cafes was something completely different. When Stuart approached me in the first time, it was, you know, this is, this is something different. It's really exciting and it's... Yeah, and like you say, p um, you know, the restaurant industry in Manchester, and, and I think people in general just expect better service better food than perhaps 10 15 years ago and, and people aren't stupid if if there are if the service isn't right or the food isn't right then they'll go elsewhere so you exactly, need to get it yeah. you need to get it right because there's so many places like i said there's so many good places in manchester and, and everywhere that people can pick and choose now so you have got to be yeah. you have got to be on top of your game which hopefully we are yeah exactly yeah now we've had good feedback so far haven't we? So can you just get that just bag out of there Okay, so th this is the um, this is the dashi that we make. It only it only sort of takes, let's say, it takes four minutes to make it, but it's a little bit sort of complicated to do it in front of front of a stack of people. So, and that's what we just serve. And then when we serve it with the dish, it's either you can have it before, or after, or or with it. But it's just a really cleansing cleansing thing to have, and it just complements the whole dish. So, 
and that's basically our dish. So it's just se seared yellowfin tuna, tartar of uh, tuna with dashi jelly, Israeli couscous cooked in mizu and ponzu, apple gel, uh, got compressed muli with a little white thing that, that we compress in sake, and selection of uh, mushrooms that are grown for us, done in sesame oil, sugar, and salt. And the last thing is cavalinero, which we, we grow ourselves as well. We've got our own propagator, so that takes, that's probably about a week and a half old, but the flavor's really intense, and a nori cracker, and makami seaweed. God, that's a mouthful. <laughs> and that's everything. Yeah. We're just going to see if we can angle this forward just a little bit so you can see it. Uh, last, last time I did this <laughs> um, was, with it, was with a turf cake, wasn't it? When I angled it forward with, uh, with Ryan and it fell off. I did. So it was quite embarrassing, so I'm not going to do it too far. I'll leave it at that. Well done. Okay, thank you. Brilliant. Well done, Michael. Improved. Okay, we'll just pass these over here to. Uh, oh, here you go. Yeah. Take it round. Take it Yeah? Yeah. Uh, do you want to take it around bef yeah. before it gets to you? It's going to get taken around. So just, just while the dish is going around and we've still got the guys up here as well, um, you oh, wait, might, I there's a date that you might want to put in, in your diaries, which is 6th of November, we're looking for. And it's where we're, we're kind of combining uh, the, sport, the sporting side of things and the hospitality side of things. And there's going to be um, a lunch at the hotel for sporting legends. You know about this? No. You <laughs> no, go I in. Do. You go in. <laughs> and, and this, this is just, this is just another dish as well. This is from the cafe. So this is our own famous sausage roll that Jay Rayner wanted to be its, his second son that we've done um, in London, and we're also doing in Manchester as well, which is a really amazing seller. But it's like all the food at, at cafe football. Everything's made on the premises. Everything's fresh. Nothing's sort of bought in or anything like that. So again, it's all about the ingredient. Yeah. No, it's trying to capture that football experience, so sharing and good atmosphere, good yeah, experience, exactly. and that's what, that's what we've tried to do. And child of memories, you know, we've got our own little sweet sh corner shop in there selling ice cream and all sort of retro sweets and stuff like that, so the kids and the adults can go and have a bag of pick and mix and things and a scoop of ice cream and a Vimto shake and things like that, but it's all, it's all about memories really, isn't yeah, it? And yeah, it is, yeah. Memories of growing up, yeah. going to the... Going to the game and just, yeah, just trying to get a little taste of that. Yes, please. Thanks. Have you had a bit? No, you go first. No, no. Stop being polite. We've got somebody else on at one o'clock. got the other one as well. <laughs> okay, and the dashi that's going with it. And then, you, and then your tea as well. Beautiful. So, you, your thoughts, Ryan? No, I've obviously um, had eaten Michael's food before, and it sounds stupid, this, but tuna really does taste like tuna, and a apple does really taste like apple. Like you can imagine, it's just the flavours are unbelievable. It's it's hard to describe unless you you obviously sample it, but it's he's yeah he's a genius. He's unbelievable with his flavours. Think, I think, though, Michael, you, you know, when we were cooking, and even 10, 15, 20 years ago, we used to mask so many flavours with creams and sauces yeah, exactly. and that kind of thing. So, you know, cooking has changed, certainly, over the last 10, 20 years. Yeah, and, and people's palates have changed as well. It's like anything, you know, is people want, want more and want more healthy things as well, which, yeah. is, which is great. And I think, I don't know about Ryan, though, you probably eat out quite a bit, so people are eating out you know, several times a week. They don't always want big, heavy, sort no. of fancy meals no. and such. Right. I'm just going to give in. I'm just going to stop tasting, and I'll, I'll, I'll have a taste in a moment. But uh, <laughs> once again, we always appreciate people coming and giving up the time, and you support for hospitality action as well. Uh, we'll all look forward to 6th of November and to the event there, uh, Sporting Legends Lunch. Hopefully, I'll be there as well. So uh, can have a big round of applause for Ryan and Michael, please? Thank you.